right, y'all, it is here from Japan. Today we are unboxing and reviewing the 21 Shimano Antares DC, the most expensive bait caster we've ever purchased. Let's go. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We are down to the back of it. First fish on the Antares. No way. We got a fish on the mag draft at sunset, yes. All right, y'all, we are stoked. This is by far the most expensive reel we've ever purchased. We wanna to thank today's video sponsor, Even Embers, for making it all possible. More on that here in just a little bit. Let's unbox this thing. And aside from telling y'all the specs and showcasing this, we're also gonna take this thing out today and get some fishing in with it because I am so curious to see how it performs for the $546 that we spent on this thing. By the way, I'm linking it down in the description. If you are interested in picking up a reel like this for yourselves, we've been looking forward to grabbing one of these for years now. And here we are five years into fishing videos, grabbing the Antares DC. This is cool. All right, that took a little longer than it should. There you go. That is the box. Check that thing out. Straight from Asian Portal Fishing, y'all. So we've uh, placed a lot of our other orders for hard to get Shimano's from Japan Tackle. This is our first time ordering from Asian Portal. And apparently it's my first time ever using a razor blade as well, because I cannot seem to work this thing. But it took like six days to get this maybe. I was expecting it to take so long and it got here faster than like if I would have ordered something just domestic, like a different reel. <laughs> so a big shout out to uh, Asian Portal Fishing as well as Japan Tackle. They've both exceeded expectations when ordering DC reels and just JDM gear in the past before. So this is the Antares DC HG. So we got the high gear ratio. This is probably the most commonly purchased model. There is the XG, which is the extra high gear ratio. There's the HG, which is kind of the mid tier, right? So it's just kind of your standard high gear ratio. And then there's just the standard DC uh, with the lowest gear ratio. And uh, we went with the HG today and this is the left handed. So everything's still going to apply whether y'all order this thing right or left handed, of course. But let's break this thing open. I have a feeling it comes with a case that's going to blow anything else we've ever purchased out of the water. So just real quickly taking a look at the packaging y'all. Everything looks premium of course when you're spending this kind of money. I knew it man. Look at this case. This is nuts. Everything's just like highly reflective cool looking font right here. I mean this is this is big money for a fishing reel. So I guess that's what we've got in here. A little Velcro strap, pulling it out. Woo, first impressions, y'all. <sighs> there it is, you hear that? So shimmery and shiny, man. And we ain't even out in the sunlight yet. And Terrace DC, this is just crazy holding this fishing reel. Like, this is the reel that most folks who fish Shimano dream of. And I'll tell you one of the reasons why we got it, really thanks to today's sponsor. And I want to tell you the main reason why I finally decided to pick something up like this for myself. It was the fact that over the years, fishing these $100, $200 uh, bait casters, right? You know, they get the job done, let me tell you. But if you hold on to those things for years and years, you're going to notice problems, whether it's something like the spool release just stops working. Many times there'll be issues with the clunkiness within the handle. You just feel a lot more feedback. You want that smoothness that I'm feeling right now with this reel. Just nothing can compare to this thing. I can already tell you. It's just on a whole nother level. And this is the 21 model, so it is pretty dadgum new. And with that being said, it's got their most advanced DC system ever put into any of their bait casters. And I'm just thrilled to get out and, and put this thing to use on the water. Whew. MGL spool three. So we're gonna break down a couple specs for you guys, but not too much to bore you. I really wanna get this thing out on the water. And so that's exactly what we're gonna do. Inside the box, aside from the reel itself, you get this guy right here, which uh, I, I've never seen come with the purchase of any other reel. What does this do? I have a feeling it's uh, important. I can't understand a dadgum thing. Maybe y'all can help me decipher that. Parts name list, I guess. Don't know what these things are. I've never seen these come with any other reel. So I've got some research to do. Apparently, I'm entering a whole new bracket of reel. I don't even know what accessories the thing comes with. You've of course got your oil. That way you can open the thing up and keep it uh, running like day one for years to come. 
So you're not gaining too much ground with that uh, XG if you're unfamiliar with gear ratio. That 7.8 is gonna mean uh, it's 7.8 full turns of the spool for every one full turn of the handle. So you are getting a lot more line in than just the standard model, but not much more than the HG, which of course again is what we grabbed. All this is going right back in the box. It'll probably never come back out except for that oil and maybe some of those tools if that's what that is to uh, maintain this reel. Let me real quickly read you the details from Asian Portal's website. By the way, if you wanted this specific reel, because it's harder to come by in left-handed, uh, you'd have to get over there because it says there's one left in stock. But the right-handers, there's tons of stock in almost all of these Antares DC models. So $527.39 with free shipping. I think there was some extra like VAT or duty fees or something that we had paid. So it came out to about $20 more than that. But here's that description for y'all. So gear ratio 7.4, maximum drag force 5 kilograms, which comes out to I'd say roughly 10 and a half to 11 pounds of drag. They claim some amazing casting distance out of the reel. Really the most casting distance you can probably get out of most any of their casting reels because of how fine-tuned this digital chip breaking system is. So when you make a cast with this reel, the digital system inside of it is actually like for every one one thousandth of a second making adjustments so that you do not get a bird's nest or a backlash that's why a lot of folks love the DC systems however there is some entry-level DC models stuff like that SLX and the Corrado and they have uh, that that lesser DC system in there right but you've got Shimano's best DC system within the new Antares DC right here the flagship of low pro bait that challenges the boundaries of flight Antares DC which pursues a stoic flight distance has been reborn by combining the latest technologies for the first time the MGL spool 3 is used as a DC reel to create a trajectory that rises lightly and stretches well so you can tell this might not be some folks uh, in English typing this thing out but it does sound compelling on the side here we've got a minimum to a maximum brake dial it looks like it's got one two three four five six seven eight different adjustments from minimum to maximum firm clicks like there's no chance you're gonna overstep or not realize you're making a change. I really do like that right there. And then if we slide this to open, there we go. Here comes that side plate. And now we've got access to even more fine tuning of the braking system. So you've got F for fluorocarbon, P, that is the braid setting. You have N for nylon or monofilament. And you have the X, which I believe is for like extra heavy. So like if you're throwing big baits, you might put it on that X setting. So we're going to talk more about this as we get it spooled up. One thing that's cool is I don't think the side plate is ever coming off and you're going to lose it like some pli uh, side plates on other bait casters. So I do like that there because uh, if you check out Fishing with Norm's channel, he bought like a $700 Steez reel and the side plate popped off before he ever even got to use it and it was lost. So I do like the fact that it seems that this is never going to disappear on you. There we go. That is back and closed. All right, I say we spool this thing up and get out and test this thing on the water and try and catch some big bass on it. Before we hit the water with this thing right here and we catch quite a few fish on it with a wide variety of baits, we have to thank today's sponsor for making this dream purchase a reality and that is Even Embers. We've entered grilling season as y'all are probably well aware and Even Embers has a huge lineup of gas grills, pellets, smokers, and maybe our new favorite product by them, the brand new gas powered griddle. The Even Embers 5 burner gas griddle with lid brings more heat, more space, more control, and more cooking versatility to the outdoor griddle experience. This gas griddle comes with a fully functional steel lid that also protects the griddle when being stored. The folding side tables are great for meal prep and storage along with the built-in paper towel rack for easy cleanups. Create your favorite breakfast, lunch, and dinner recipes all in the Even Embers five burner gas griddle. One of the largest on the market and coming in at a phenomenal price point of only $349. Dollars available online or at select tractor supply stores across the US. I'm sure some of y'all are on the market for a new grill, maybe even the griddle we just got, or even the pellet heater for those summer nights out there on the patio. So if that sounds like you and you're ready to get to grilling or griddling, go ahead and check the link down in the description and pinned comment. Thank you, Even Ember, so much for sponsoring today's episode. Let's go ahead and get to fishing. First time out on the water with the Antares. We're in the PDL, we're in the pedal drive. Haven't broken it out in a while, and I spooled it up with braid just because for the first uh, showing of it right here on today's episode, I would like to probably throw some top water and some like bottom baits like a Texas rig. So what I've done is I went ahead and did a fluorocarbon leader and I got a Texas rig tied on first. Try not to drop this in the water. And if we can get a bite on the Texas rig, I bought a few other baits just to have some fun with. I brought a half ounce click bait. I brought a frog, so some top water. Just wanted to bring a few out to showcase this reel. See if it's truly legit for 550 bucks. Never made a cast with this thing. Just got it spooled up. Didn't even test cast at the house. I don't even know how. Okay, so the tension is 
pretty loose. I'm probably going to leave it fairly loose. Um, since this thing is so advanced and it's supposed to do everything for you, I don't think I need it to really drop slow. So I'm going to loosen it up just a hair again. Uh, usually for you newer folks getting into bait casters, if it drops slowly or not at all, that's going to be ideal for like learning. Then you want to loosen it to where there's a little bit of just barely any wiggle lift that in your spool. And hopefully that bait drops slowly. You can get familiar with it. Then you can start loosening that tension and really managing your cast with your thumb. And so, uh, yeah, that's that. But also on the brakes, I'm going to have it just a few clicks down from the maximum. It looks like I'm two clicks down from the maximum. But yeah, we're about to have at it. I got it on a Guggen Squad go-to rod. So this is like a, the most popular rod most people are out there with throwing bait casters on a seven foot medium heavy fast action rod general all-purpose and I'd really like to get straight to it but actually I think I need to open the side plate last thing uh, hopefully this doesn't fall in the water and I need to put this on it's on nylon which is monofilament I'm gonna switch it over to P which is braid now it should be optimized for the uh, braided line we've got on here close that and we should literally be good to go. I'm going to make my first cast just into the middle of nowhere because uh, I'm just I'm just curious how she's going to fare. So I'm, I'm not going to thumb it. I'm two steps off of max and I got the tension fairly decent. I'm just going to cast it. I'm going to send it too. Let's see what happens. Beautifully done. I will tell you, I didn't get a, a ton of distance. I'm going to loosen the tension. I'm going to back off the brakes a little bit. I'm curious to see how far we can take this. The wind's at our back for a moment. Let's make a few casts with this thing and see if we can get some serious distance before we really start fishing. That tension knob is going to affect the rate of fall on the decline and like when the bait hits the water, how much line's gonna come off the spool. See how tight it was? If you have the tension knob loose, but this is, this is daring right here, but if you have the tension knob loose when it hits the water, I don't even wanna let it go. See, I stopped it, but it's gonna get a bad bird's nest, okay? So if you're not sure about that tension knob, don't have too much understanding of it, that's gonna affect how your uh, bait caster reacts when your bait is on the decline and when it hits the water, okay? So you tighten that up and you won't get a bird's nest when it hits the water if you forget to thumb it, right? So if I forget to thumb it and it's a little bit tighter, see, I tightened it up a little bit, not enough. If you're talking about being new to bait casters, normally you're gonna thumb it when your bait hits the water, right? So that's, that's different. By the way, we're going with some funky colorful braid because it's all I had at the house. Just, just bear with me here. Let me tighten it up a little bit more. Now it's falling slow. So watch this, I'm not even gonna touch it. You won't even get a bird's nest probably if I fling it out a little bit. Boom, hit the water, nothing to worry about. So that's what your tension knob really helps with. Now the brakes are going to affect those first handful of moments, right? When your bait is on the incline and it's really getting sent out there by the weight of the bait, it can start moving that spool so fast that it actually nests up too. And if you fling your rod with too much force, you could actually get a bird's nest just because you've sent it out too fast. And that's what the DC system is to supposed to help negate. So I'm gonna take it down to halfway now. So you can see maximum is right there. Minimum is right there. I'm smack dab in the middle. So I'm just going to send it. I got the tension tightened up a little bit. I'm going to back off just a hair. I want to keep it pretty close to where we had it at first. Now I'm either going to get a bird's nest right now or, or I'm not. I'm going to send it. We're going to see what happens. Just like that last cast. Here we go. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We are down to the backing. That's as good as it gets. That's as good as it gets, ladies and gentlemen. We could send it a little bit further, but... And by the way, this is heavy braid, just because it's all I had. This is probably the thickness of 20-pound floral. I mean, this is heavy braid. Like I said, all I had at the house. So it's even more compelling that it's tossing it out that far, given the fact that this braid is pretty dadgum thick, okay? So I'm thoroughly impressed with the first handful of casts on this. But now we're going to get serious, and we're going to actually try and catch some fish. So I'm going to leave the settings as is for now. I don't need to get any more distance than that. Uh, thrilled with the casting. Everything on this thing's so smooth. You see me cranking it. You don't hear a peep out of this reel. I mean, it's just solid. Solid. Built for salt water, too. You can take this thing out to the salt water. I mean, it's sealed. It's got more metal components. I don't know if it's necessarily all the brass, aluminum, what have you. But regardless, there's not very many plastic parts in this baby. And that is why this thing's going to last for years and years and years. Let's get quiet and get after it. This is the 21 Antares DC. Let's catch some fish on this thing. Oh, forgot to mention something. Drag. I, I think I tightened it up. But drag is always loose from the factory, okay? Because when you store a reel long term, I don't mean like every time you put it in the garage or put it on the boat deck, but when you store these things long term, you want to back off the drag so it's not always tense in there. And so you won't get as much longevity out of the reel. But you know, when, once you get these reels, you need to crank up that drag. I'm throwing a Texas rig, so I actually want it pretty pretty stout that might not even be tight enough so i want to crank that drag because i want it to be locked when i set the hook with this bandito bug here so anyways drag is now adjusted i would have missed my first fish guaranteed if i didn't tighten that thing up let's have at it now if y'all have seen my recent kayak tournament videos you know i'm normally in the autopilot with spot lock 
Uh, see, I need to loosen my tension now, otherwise that bait doesn't fall as well, so I need it a little bit looser. Uh, but this kayak does not have spot locks, so we are gonna drift right past these trees. Oh wow, I'm feeling the timber down there. This is great. Working that bandito bug right over those trees down there. There we go. See, now the tension's a little bit looser, so that'll allow the bait to fall down there. That's what we want. Oh, 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 fish, fish, first fish. Oh yes, I was actually swimming the bandito bug because I was casting at these lily pads. First fish on the Antares, no way. Okay, so I was actually casting at these lily pads thinking I should probably target this tree over here and I swim in them back and boom. <laughs> that, that shows the versatility of a Texas rig bandito bug, man. Even when it's swimming, it is kicking and it has so much action. This is my favorite color, green pumpkin purple right here, but enough about that. How about that DC? First fish ever on this thing. Let's go. Oh, oh my gosh. We just got broke off at the leader knot. That was probably a f giant. Let's catch one on the clickbait real quick and then we'll throw the frog. Any noise you hear while I'm reeling is not the sound of the reel, it's actually the braid. It's just that thick braid. So you're hearing it kind of whine a little bit as I reel but it is definitely not this buttery smooth Shimano. I spool this up with like some 15 or 20 pound fluorocarbon. It's gonna be silent. There's one. Oh, gotcha. Bandito bug in the trees. Got it. fish in the boat now on this thing man i gotta tell you it is a beast i think i'm gonna switch things up honestly i kind of want to see if they'll hit the frog over here and then i might uh even go for the the big swim bait got him there we go that might be the one we're looking for he's going into the grass oh boy oh, big hydro we haven't caught a giant but we have wore this reel out look at this we're throwing the mag draft on that same rod really a beefier stick would be much better suited to this but this thing is not even tripping i haven't changed settings at all it's still pretty loose and yet the dc is not allowing it to bird's nest even with an awkward cast and a big heavy bait on this go-to rod so i have put this thing through the ringer i just figured i'd make a few last casts with this big bait before we call it quits, but wow, what a reel. Oh, oh my gosh, we got a fish on the mag draft at sunset, yes, come on. Wow, what a reaction strike. We just caught a big swim bait fish on the Antares DC right at sunset. There's no way, heck yes. Thank you, bud, what a catch. That's gonna do it. All right, y'all, that's going to cover it for today's video. Let me tell you what, the Antares DC gets a five-star review from me. It is the nicest reel we've ever owned, and I'm curious what y'all want to see us do with it. So please let me know in the comments section what's an idea you think would maybe go viral. Just do mega views, like something of interest. Like, what do you want to see this reel is capable of? You want us to run over it? Just drop some ideas down in the comments, and if y'all would and you've made it this far, please drop a like on this video. That'll help push it out to new folks who would love to see information about this reel and have never come across it. Can't wait to hear some of these ideas y'all have for us. And also, what other reels might you want to see us do a review on or first impressions? Just uh, do you like more budget reels or do you want the high-end stuff? Typically, we do Shimano. Do y'all want to see some lose? Would you like to sit? What do you want to see? That's all I'm asking. Hit that subscribe button and also check out Even Embers with a link down in the description. We'll catch y'all on the next episode. Peace.